past the river was running. Remind, remind, remind the listen people. The current, the current's rolling. I do have a notebook that uh, Pastor Donna says I can't pass around because they take too long for each one, and the choir director says if we're not back by eight, I'm in a lot of trouble. Uh, so, but she was the last one, so if we're late, then I will blame her. But anyway, uh, pass you can pass this different things around because this actually shows some pictures. This right here, this was some of the first uh, ministry that the Church of God had was a guy named George Clayton. And he was uh, married to Elizabeth, and we're actually going to see their graves in just a little bit. And she was called Lizzie. And he had the floating Bethel. And what the floating Bethel was is basically this boat here. They would go ahead, they called it floating because it didn't have a motor. So what they would do is they would go ahead and take it upstream, up the river, and then they just let her go. Wherever it landed, that was God's will to start preaching. New Martinsville Church of God is actually the very first church of God in West Virginia and it was by the, the floating Bethel. But George Clayton was actually from Roseby's Rock. He was a Roseby's Rock boy. And so the floating Bethel was huge. Well, on June 29th, 1898, the gospel trumpet used to be up in Grand Junction, Michigan. And the, the problem up in Grand Junction, Michigan, coal was $6 a ton. And so what happened is in West Virginia, you could buy coal for 35 cents a ton or 70 cents delivered. And, and also because of the Ohio River, you had some great transportation. And so it was decided that the Church of God would go ahead and move from Grand Junction. So on June 29th, 1898, this is where we came. We had uh, 12 cars. We had a, a pass uh, two passenger cars, a car for the luggage, and also nine cars of printing press things. And so, this actually, this picture is right here. That concrete is, is original. There's a little wall. This actually used to all be open. Uh, when we moved here, I, I tracked it down. This was all open, but they put some landfill, some dirt in it right here. But this picture, if you guys want to go ahead and pass around, that is actually the train station. And so they went from Grand Junction to uh, uh, to Moundsville. We arrived here at five o'clock at night, but there was a problem. We only paid for Grand Junction, a, a ticket from Grand Junction, Michigan to Moundsville, but we needed to end up by the Fostoria. And so what happened is the conductor was at home uh, eating eating with his wife and he was, he was not gonna be interrupted. He was not gonna come back and take them there. And plus they only paid the fare here. So the very first night, we in the Church of God had to spend the night on the train. And so some people, the floating Bethel was still around there. It's going to burn down in December 1898. No one knows where, but uh, this was where the first, when we first came as a Church of God, there were, again, 12 cars, and uh, there was a track that actually cut through Walmart, as many of you know, and uh, to go to the, by the Fostoria. And so this is where we first were at. That's a picture of the actual station. And we had to spend the night here. So now we're going to be going to where uh, the home was. And it's up in Mount Rose Cemetery. So the best way to, if you do lose the white van, uh, if you do, you do uh, lose it, the best way to do is go back to Jefferson, take a left, and then you're, before you do the bend of 250, just take the right up there and, uh, and watch for the white van. Load up. <laughs> 
I know. That's when you said you do know who you met. So right now we're up on top of this little ridge. Over to my left, there used to be a factory called Bostoria Glass Factory, Glass Works. And that was, Bostoria was there. And so that's why we had to spend the night uh, at the railroad station because there was actual railroad tracks that came right to the Bostoria. And that's where we thought we were coming, but we didn't pay that little extra. So what they did is the early church of God went ahead and built the, the home, this was the gospel trumpet home. And you kind of see a picture if you want to pass it around. 200 rooms, huge, huge, huge hotel. Huge, well, not a hotel, huge home. These are the actual steps that you see in the picture. And so when you, when you see the picture, these are the steps that are right in the middle of it. This little uh, embankment, this, this was our road that we actually built. The Church of God built this road because you can kind of see where that white uh, house is just a little bit past that was where our, our plant was was where our printing mill and printing press and things were so this area right here this was as the notebook goes around this was a huge 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 200 room and this is where the gospel trumpet family uh lived and they were called the saints and so the town thought we were a little weird because we all lived together. And uh, Matt, what's interesting is we still, until 1977, we still got our electric bill mailed to the Saints. Uh, and so that kind of stuck with us. Now, the reason why the Church of God left Moundsville, why we don't have Moundsville University instead of Anderson University, is because the city brought electricity to Fostoria and Noah Byram, Noah Byram wanted them to bring 150 feet of electricity up here, and the city said no. And so if, if, if the city would have brought 150 feet of electricity up this way, we'd still be here. We'd have nice roads all over town still. And so this is, as you see the notebook going around, this was the home. Right about, you see kind of a big marker over there. There was a 5,500 uh, auditorium tabernacle, and it was owned by a guy named James Bodley. And what happened is, is you could preach there if you preached against booze. That was the main, doesn't matter what you preach on, but at some point you got to preach against booze. Because the Methodist church at the time did not let you preach against alcohol. And so he got mad at them, and so he said, if you're going to preach there, that's, where, that's what you have to preach against at some point in your sermon. And so we got along well as, as, not, as being temperate and not drinking, so that was there. Several people have, a lot of people have told me at one point there was a lake up here that a little boy drowned in. Um, I've talked to the caretakers. They can't find any evidence, so I, I don't know, and there's pictures that... Some people say it was right over to the right. I'm not sure of that, but the big tabernacle. Um, in the notebook, you've got a picture of the hotel, and then you've got a little postcard, the next one, and then you've got a picture of the auditorium. And then there's there's some couple pictures looking down because three of these houses, the white house with the, with the red roof, are kind of scarlet. Uh, not this brown one, but the next two white ones, those houses were here when we were here in 1898. So this was a huge, huge, huge home that uh, the people lived. And these steps right here are, are the actual steps. We actually cut this road in to take our stuff there. If you're a, a Moundsville historian, you got some Tomlinson, and the Tomlinsons were the first ones that started Moundsville. Elizabeth Tomlin, and that's why uh, uh, the Moundsville was Elizabethtown originally. 
Moundsville is originally Mound Town and then Elizabeth Town, and they combined. So, so look at the notebook. Step on the step. Run up and down if you want, or stand there. Run up and down. <laughs> Those are the actual steps. Yeah, history. Steps, Emily. Come on, girl. You don't want to. Somebody go with you? Yeah. <laughs> A little tricky. So this little area right here was actually a plot, the gospel trumpet plot. You got a picture of what it looked like. You pass that around. And so these are people who died while they were working at the gospel trumpet. And there's a lot of little ones. And you know that it, used, it was marked. This right here is JT. It's on that corner, it's on that corner. We don't know what happened to that one, but this was the gospel trumpet plot. So these people died while they were workers, or, or there's a couple little bitty ones. That picture is a little bit better, tells who's buried here. So these are all faithful Church of God people that lived at the, at the home at one point, but then passed away. So this is our plot, and it's marked, it was, it, it had originally four, but someone took that one. And uh, we talked about George Clayton, the, uh, uh, the floating Bethel. That is he and his wife's grave right there. You see the two, the one to the right. So these are actually people who were Church of God that, that passed away uh, in the eight years that we were here in Moundsville. There's a couple of young ones that's real interesting. There used to be, when I first came here, when I first arrived, there used to be one of those lithograph pictures on this one here, but it looks like someone's taken it. So. So this right here are people who, who uh, uh, passed away. And then you see George's and his wife, uh, Elizabeth, over there. It was Mary Elizabeth, so we call her Liz. Anybody have any questions or? He was, might be descendants. He was originally from Roseby's Rock. Yeah. So these were all faithful. Um, one of the markers, Caldwell, is a very, very his. Uh, William Caldwell ended up having three sons, and two of them are pastors, and one just retired. Well, a grandson would have just retired. And so the Caldwells are very, very well known uh, families in the Church of God. So is this what started the cemetery? Or was the cemetery here by this, the turn while the home was here? The home, matter of fact, what happened is we tore the home down. We tried to sell the home. No one would buy it. So we tore it apart and, and shipped it to Anderson. And that's what Anderson was built with. Uh, and so, no, then they sold the land. So this would have probably been the first plot. There is some uh, right over here. There's uh, um, 
some some military this is the military this area over here a lot i mean there's military throughout but that's where a lot of the military were were buried over there There was right about where that guy is. He's like, he's going to say, <laughs> right about where he's at right now. Um, there was a planing mill. And you got a picture of the planing mill. And then right in this area, I've been told that right where the North Woods, right in this area, was actually our factory. It used to be an old shoe plant, old shoe factory. And so it was right here. I'll, I'll pass the notebook around. Uh, and so we got the, the where our printing presses, business office were, the planing mill. And when we first came, when we first finally, the next day, were able to get out here, we put all of our equipment in the planing mill at first, in the planing, uh, and then also we did have two fires. And one fire, we had to keep everything there. The second fire, we took all of our printing presses to the penitentiary. And uh, what's, what's fascinating is, I just, uh, a guy gave me a book a 1901 book, uh, and he's like, I'm going to give it to a library, and I begged him to give it to us, and he did. Uh, give it to me, and he did. Uh, anyway, but the first library at the penitentiary came from the Church of God. E.E. E. Byram gave $1,000 in 1899. $1,000, so we had the first library. So here you have, right here you have the plant, the printing press, the planing mill was over where that guy was walking, and... Um, what happened is, is we stored things when we had a fire and things like this. This is a, where's the, also kind of flip through and look through, bless you, this picture right here, and this shows you from, just if you look right over there, you can kind of see the graveyard. So that's where the home was, and this is where the plant was, and you can kind of see those houses that I mentioned were still there, and then you look down, so. And as you're uh, passing it around, the next two stops are not going to really be stops. We're going to go on Oak Street, and um, probably what's going to happen is we're probably going to cause a traffic jam. I'm going to jump out, point, and then get back in, uh, because that was what happened. Uh, the Church of God left in 1906. There's a picture of them taking down the gospel trumpet home. And so basically you had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of workers and then all of a sudden, then they go. So the Church of God people that stayed here got really discouraged because there weren't a lot of people left. So there were two of them, John and Della Moore, they called them Bud. They decided in 1907 to come back to Moundsville and to continue the Church of God. So where we're going next, we're going to go on Oak Street and Chuck's going to drop me off, hopefully he slows down. And I want to point, it's no longer there. You've got, you've got the 27, you've got 31, there's no 29. But what uh, Bud and Della Moore did is they had a Sunday school. That was where the Sunday school was. And then in 1912, we moved over to North Street. We're just going to drive along North Street because uh, no one knows exactly where the church was. It was on the north side. And one of the active members that was at North was at, well, was at on, on Oak Avenue and North Street was a guy named Russell Clark. Lin Linda, who was that? That's Dwayne Clark's father. And so he was over on Oak Street, Oak Avenue, and then on North Street. So we're just going to drive by those. I'm going to get out. I'm going to point. Look where I'm pointing. And then and then as we drive, we're going to drive slowly on North Street and look everywhere. <laughs> so, and then we're going to go back to where uh, we went to on Ash Avenue Church of God. And there's cookies and hot chocolate and coffee. Woo! Yeah!